Hey everyone, I'm Justin Woodring. Today I'll be talking to you about how you can color the output of your terminal application using ANSI escape codes. Now, to understand ANSI escape codes and what they are, we have to get a bit of a history lesson. So, ANSI escape codes are the culmination of a lot of work that was going on in the 60s. Um, when terminals were first coming around, uh, many different manufacturers were finding ways to embed codes into the, or command codes basically, into the text so that these um, terminals, which are, you know, just displaying text, could manipulate it in a certain way that could be styled or maybe uh, indicate that something on the screen needed to be updated. And this is the beginning of the earliest text-based interfaces. Um, you know, if you've ever seen, like, you know, an old, old, like, um, I don't know, old DOS uh, interface or something like that. Sometimes you maybe if you go on to a Home Depot or something like that. Some of these things are still built using these text-based interfaces. And um, now, obviously, they take advantage of newer software and better, um, you know, better standards like ANSI. But at the time, these people were building basically it was all proprietary. All these companies were coming out with their own terminals, and they all had their own uh, different co command codes. So you, you would type two different things on different terminals to get the exact same result. Um, and ultimately, people realize, hey, we need a standard for this because, you know, we can't literally have people designing a solution for every single terminal that comes out. Um, and it settled pretty closely to the VT standard. Um, now, VT is just one of the many different types of terminals that was available at the time, but it also seemed to be that the command code structure was pretty good for adapting towards a, towards a more um, universal standard. And that universal standard became known as ANSI. Uh, now, ANSI actually supports a whole bunch of different command codes, so you can do things like update random characters halfway across the screen on the terminal, but today we're just talking about some of the markup options that are available to you, uh, just to make your, to spruce up your application a little bit, you know? So, if you look at something like, let's look at like, um, NPM, you know, NPM's a tool that almost every single web developer at some point has used, and... You know, you may or may not have used it, but I'm sure you've seen a tool that does something similar. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, we're going to install something right here. And I, and now I'm looking at this. And, oh wait, do you see that? Look, there was that little progress bar, and then the colored text on the side. Now, you'd be thinking, hey, why doesn't my application look like that? You know, my application sucks. It doesn't look like that. My application prints ten lines to get the progress out. I mean, hey, let's look at a primitive application, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so, we're in a basic Python script now, that's what we're looking at, and as you can see, I've named it the Astounding Tool, because, you know, this is my new Astounding Cly tool. Now, um, let's run it, you know, see the output here, so, here we go, okay, oh wow, look, there's a progress, and, um, the fake task encountered an error, it's attempting a recovery, oh my god, the recovery is successful, and our task completed successfully, but, you should be able to see the fact that something like an error occurred, or, I mean, why does the progress bar take 10 lines? I was looking at that NPM tool earlier, and it just stayed on one line. So, what's wrong? Again, we're going to talk about how we don't have ANSI escape codes in this tool. And I imagine that if you're designing Cly tool for the first time, you're probably in a similar boat. Um, you know, your progress bar, for example, probably uses 10 lines or more. Um, and you're, you know, no one really has any indicator that an error should stand out any more than an attempted recovery or a successful recovery. So, um, let's just jump for a second over to ANSI colors. So, we're going to use these to spruce up this application, and you'll see how simple it is to actually incorporate all of this into your application. So, here are, I'm just going to clear this, here we go, here are just the basic eight colors you have available to you using ANSI escape codes. Now you get black, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, cyan, and white. Um, you also can use these as background colors and they do stack. Now I don't have a demonstration of them stacking, but I will run this and you can see the colors. These will look a little different on every single terminal because it uses a terminal color palette. Um, so if someone has a different definition for what green is, green's going to look a little bit different. Um, so that's why you can do things like have a solarized theme in your terminal, and you see that people who really like to rice up their terminal configurations uh, typically do have themes applied. But these colors usually still are at least resemble the colors they're named after. So, you know, in this terminal, for example, you see that these colors are actually quite vibrant. Um, 
and if I was to run npm in the terminal, I would use the same colors, you know. Um, so here's just just a few colors we have available to us, and now I'm going to step through just coloring the output of my application. So first, just to give you a heads up, um, this is an actual ANSI escape code, and technically this part right here is just an escape sequence. It literally corresponds to pressing the escape key on your keyboard, but the thing is when you press escape it's not mapped to a key, it maps the various functionality in your system, so it, the ANSI escape code is called an escape code because you're using the escape key and providing a sequence after that. Um, but we have the, basically just a series of numbers and then just it steps through here um, you know, one, two, three, four, and there's just various different colors associated with it. And believe me, the other numbers, they do things as well. Like if you were type like probably like 27 or something like that, it'd probably do something. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it does because we're not interested in what it does. Um, and there's some other things to even take advantage of various keyboard characters. But again, we aren't really interested in that. What we are interested in is these because these will give us color output. So when you apply one of these, for example, print this, um, this is the Unicode representation for escape, like I said, but if you print this as a whole in Python, for example, other languages may have a different way of representing how you should print the escape character, but ultimately everything that follows is the same. Um, and if you print this, you will see that it will just stay red until you do something to undo it. That means providing a different color or resetting the color. So down here, you can see I had a couple spaces after the black and the red and whatnot, and if I run, if I actually just scroll down, you can see that there's an equivalent number of spaces right here, you know, like, I copy this, you know, it's the same length as this, it is, um, and so you can take that into consideration when you're designing something like maybe a te centered text box or something like that in your terminal, um, you know, cloud applications, they come in all forms and shapes and sizes, varieties, some of them have nice little boxes and you know forms and stuff like that, and you may not choose to do that with yours, but it's important to understand that if you leave these settings on, they'll stay on until you should do something to undo them. Um, so let's go back to my astounding tool. If we go over here, um, you see my astounding tool is, you know, it's just white, you know, doesn't really, it's not astounding in my opinion, but maybe we can make it a bit more impressive. So I'm gonna copy the color for magenta. Actually no, cyan, cyan stands out a lot. I'm going to take that color, I'm going to put it right here, super easy, you know, I'm going to provide a link to these colors, not a link, but I'll just provide the colors in the comments, and then you can just copy them and include in your project, so, um, yeah, this, the terminal is actually, I mean, the terminals that interpret these anti-escape codes are pretty intelligent, so, you know, you don't have to worry about spacing or anything like that here, it'll stop as soon as it hits that M, which again is just part of the code, um, so we'll save that. And I'm going to run my astounding application again. Oh, look at that. So I copied the background color for astounding. Now, that's a bit more astounding to me, personally. But let's do something that, you know, perhaps maybe encountering an error. Everyone knows that if you encounter an error, it should either be yellow or red, depending on the severity of the error. Because if it's yellow, it's probably a warning that can be recovered. And in this case, we can recover it. So I'm going to do, hey, we encountered a yellow error. But actually, this time, I don't want to use the background color. I want to use the foreground color. So we're going to here. Accidentally selected that. There we go. Drop that in there. And we want to reset our colors, otherwise, you know, we might run into an error with that. So, boom. Run our thing. Oh, see, we encountered an error. Look at that. It's yellow. Now you can see that's standing out. But maybe we need to attempt recovery, but I mean, the recovery could be successful or it couldn't be. But in this case, it is successful. So, obviously, we should represent success with green. You know, that's what we do. So, go here. Um, drop that in there. Very easy. End it again. And the fake task successfully complete. You may want to use green here. You may not. I don't know. I like to use, um, I like to use, you know, the different colors for different things. Usually purple. I like to use the purple, like the magenta and the cyan for things that are not important but should still be like headers and stuff like that. And then, you know, for anything else, you know, you may just want to use something like white down here, you know, because, you know, reset isn't quite, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit brighter if you use the actual true white. Um, so it's going to be and there we go. So that's the background. Now, again, I, maybe I don't want to use the background color. The background color kind of looks tacky, in my opinion. Stands out too much. Looks a little weird, hard to read. Run it again. 
boom. Fixed. There we go. Now, now we've got color and application. So the last thing we want to do here is perhaps maybe change the progress bar to where it doesn't use tint lines. So again, some of these things, for example, the progress bar here, um, this is actually just a simple for loop and it's sleeping for a little while. And then we're just, this is a Python specific thing. You could do it differently in different languages, but I'm basically just printing out this character times I, as in like, I want to print it that many times. So um, as I increases, we get a, an increasing thing here. So we, and ultimately we end up increasing or we end up printing 33 of these things. Um, now, again, that's kind of a bit more Python semantics, but ultimately, like I said, this can be done with any language. Um, but what's cool is that, for example, we can also do this thing where we use this backslash R character. Now, this is less of an anti-escape code, more just a generic terminal control code. Uh, but, again, it's important to know these because you can use this to repeat the same line over and over again. I'm going to run this, and Python's printing semantics are a little weird, so if I get it wrong the first time, you'll see, oh, well, why didn't it work? You know, most languages, they have a print line, and they have a print. Uh, Python, it just has a print. If you want to change the print line, there's this weird thing on the end like this, where you set it to where there's none, and if you can see, actually, in the little IntelliSense thing here, that's basically the case, that if you don't provide anything, it's backslash in. And that's the new line character. Um, but I'm going to just turn that off, and we print this R line, Actually, I'll just turn it off and show you what it does. It should just start, keep wrapping. It'll just print over and over. Well, as soon as it's done, that is. There's a bit of flushing that needs to happen. So, you see, oh, well, that's weird. It's just stacking on top of itself. But if we use R, that, bit, that tells the terminal to overwrite that text. Start back at the beginning of the line. Go back. Look, there we go. Hey, look, a fancy progress bar. Now, there we go. Boom. Oh, wait, look, the fake task encountered an error. Well, how can we fix that? Well, again, there are ways to solve this. Um, you could either include another print right here, you know, um, or the other option is just put a new line right before you print the fake task. There we go. Let it run. And there's a fake task. We attempted recovery, recovery successful. This is a simple way to just incorporate a bit more um, user friendliness into your terminal applications. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you, and see you next time.